So I don't know if you guys know this, but if you live in America, or if you don't live in America, you're probably aware of the inauguration today happening. Donald Trump is being sworn in as president. Every four years we gather on these steps. I am about six or seven hours away. I'm in upper New York. I am not there today. A lot of my photojournalist friends are there. I've been following all of their streams and following Twitter. Today is a crazy day in the photojournalist world. Uh, I wish I was there in DC. You know, I was supposed to be in Africa, so I didn't try to get any credentials to go to this. I wish that that I was there with all, all my photojournalism buddies on the ground, being able to see like what's going on. My background is not photojournalism, but I was in Ferguson for a long time, embedded there. Tear gas fire. You know, like this stuff is happening on U.S. soil. You know, if you're not aware of what's going on. Get off Fox, get off NBC, you know, go find a media photojournalist, someone, follow them on Periscope, follow them on Twitter, so that way you can see what's actually happening on the ground, instead of like the Star Spangled Banner being sung. Photojournalism is an interesting topic because anybody can technically be a photojournalist these days or have a press badge of some kind. You know, you could go to Kinko's and, and make your own or Walmart or, you know, wherever they have a laminator. You could, you know, you can build your own press badge. It's so easy. So let's talk about the types of camera gear that you use if you're a photojournalist on the ground. Let's talk about the filmmaking side. Just because, like, the photo thing, yeah, there's probably tons of information out there. So let's specifically talk about cameras first. Everybody wants to know what's the perfect photojournalist camera, and I'm gonna tell you what, there is no right or wrong answer. The kinds of cameras that I use when I'm doing photojournalism work, whether it be photo or video, are all DSLRs or mirrorless. So I've got some shirts embroidered, so I'm just running errands with him. out here. So the reason I like using mirrorless versus DSLRs, mirrorless are small, lightweight, just like the camera I'm using right now. Um, you know, we're using the Sony a7S II most of the time. The 5Ds are still around, the Nikon, you know, the D5s, the D4s, the D4Ss, hundreds of D800s. I would say any of those are comparable to like a 5D Mark III. I never brought up why we are here at this garage. Basically Simon is getting some stuff welded by his friend that owns this garage with his dad. And we're just kind of waiting until he's done kind of welding this part for Simon real quick. But man, check this place out. Look at this like garage in this really small town. This thing is awesome. Just left Tucci Hot Rods. Uh, Dom was super awesome. Gave us a really, really big tour. Him and his dad own the business. There. Let's talk a little bit more about cameras. Since this episode is based on gear, I figured I would just share a couple pieces. Photojournalism is a small part of my career, but. I will say since I've been in Ferguson, you know, I was there for a really long time. Let's chat about something really quickly. This is some of the gear that a photojournalist might carry around. Here we have two 5D Mark III's. You know, all these logos all over it. This one, I've blacked everything out. I mean, obviously the lens cap has that fun sticker on there. I voted today. You can't see the manufacturer. I've blacked out what kind of camera it is. If somebody was gonna maybe steal my camera or something like that or it looked expensive, this makes it look more ninja status. This camera does look expensive still, for sure. But that's why this body, I would not have all this crap over and I would gaff tape out the logos and whatnot. If you want to go as low profile as possible, I would go with the 5G Mark III, 16 to 35, 50, and then maybe I'd bring a 7200 depending. In my experience as a photojournalist, situations where there might be rocks being thrown 
or riot police, you don't want to call much attention to yourself, you know? So that's why you black out the camera. That's why you go with minimal equipment. The main reason why I shot with the 5D Mark III so much in Ferguson was because it was so easy to switch from photo to video. It's just one switch. Boom. Video. Photo. Video. Photo. This camera is great in low light, but you know, now that the Sony's have come out and you get the 5D Mark IV, the 1DX Mark II, that's great. How much money do you want to spend though? So 16 to 35 is always my workhorse, especially for video because of the stabilization. I know I keep bringing up photo um, as well, but for video, this lens is freaking awesome. You know, if, if I was just photo, I'd probably get the 16 to 35 2.8 just because, you know, you get the extra stop of light. The Rokinon lenses are awesome. I'm actually shooting on the Rokinon 35 right now, and it's the T15. This one is also, yeah, this one's also a T15. This is the 85. Shooting on the 35, this is the 85. And these lenses are pretty inexpensive, and I think the 35 and the 85 are tack sharp. I really like shooting those medium to wide shots, so personally my favorite is the 16 to 35, the 35, or the, the 50. You know, that's kind of like where, where my, my sweet spot is, uh, and I like being close to the action as well. You know, there's no combination of what is the best. You know, you just have to try them all out. I hope you guys learned something today. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button down there. Make sure to comment too on what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future or what kind of gear questions you have. I'll talk to you guys later.